All right, welcome back to another Jay Athens video, everyone. <clears throat> Today I want to talk about, I want to give an outlook on Canada going forward. So we're just going to put our focus on there. So, <clears throat> all right, so right now we're using the Jay Athens Insights spreadsheets. Uh, if you guys do want access to this, I will leave a link in the description below and you can get access to this spreadsheet. So what I'm doing now, we're going to do an outlook from today's date is August 5th, 2020. So we're just going to give an outlook on Canada going forward. And this is something I've been looking at. So I decided to make a video to share with you guys. All right. So let's talk about Canada going forward. All right, so now we see, first things first, Canada's interest rates. Let me change the color of this. All right, so we see Canada's interest rate, 0.25%. The three-month LIBOR is at just over half a percent right there. And we do see central banks pumping liquidity. All right, so also we have unemployment rate at 13.7%. It actually ticked down to 12.3%. So this is just a master tab of what I'm looking at, just to give me a quick overview on currencies. And we also have some, some, uh, some outlook from the central banks. All right, so Governor Macklem, he stated that they were gonna keep the effective lower interest rates or the bound at a lower bound at 0.25% for at least two years. And they have 5 billion in spending or, you know, 5 billion, of cash to pump into the economy to keep interest rates on hold. So their outlook on inflation is 2%. So what I'm doing right now is I'm showing you guys how to essentially build a case. And that's why I recommend this, this spreadsheet for you guys, because it will help you build a case on, a, uh, on an economy. And you know, in Forex, you're essentially going against another exchange rate. So you need to have both ends of the, uh, the pair understood all right so we're looking at canada once again all right so we understand volatility is low so with that being said we know our environment in the market and with canada we also see that pmis we had an update on pmis where well well not well over 50 but we broke over 50 coming from 33 so that's a good sign if you understand pmis as well if you guys are watching this video and don't understand what i'm saying I do recommend on August 10th, on Monday, we do have the J. Athens Macroeconomics course. And we break these concepts down in details for people to understand on when you're trading, it's not about just hitting the button, guys. Oh, support resistance, buy or sell because you feel like it. Use fundamental data to build your case. All right, so looking at central banks, we're focusing on Canada, we see that in June, from April, there was a <clears throat> very large increase from 159% to 252% of liquidity. So we know that they're adding liquidity to the market. And that's due to COVID, you know, the, the, the situation that happened earlier this year. All right, so remember, on the master tab, central banks, they're looking for an outlook on inflation around 2%. So looking at the inflation tab, we see that back in April, we were at, we, we were at 2.2 for the, no, sorry, that's Australia. Sorry about that. Back in February, we were, we were at 2.2 for the headline, 1.8 for the core. Now, beginning of the year, we had COVID. COVID-19, it hit all economies across the world. So we see that as time went on until June, inflation slowed down a bit and that could be due to the liquidity pump that they even said 5 billion so we understand what's going on in the markets but so far for now they're at 1.1 percent for the core and 0.7 percent for the headline so not close to two percent but you know coming from may if we look at may's numbers we're at negative 0.4 percent we increased to 0.7% even on the core as well. So we are pushing closer to that 2% core inflation outlook. Now, as far as wages, because you know, wages go hand in hand with inflation. As far as wages, once we look at Canada from February, we had 3.7%. And now in May, we're at 
So we see wages are going up and that could be due to the, the central bank stepping in from the monetary side and the fiscal has to come in and adjust things. So wages are going up. Inflation are picking, is picking back up for Canada. Those are good signs. If we look at unemployment, once again, we had COVID hit all economies across the board. So unemployment was at 5.6%. We topped out at 13.7%. Now we're increasing low. So if we know the lower that unemployment number gets, the better for that economy. So, so far, we see that Canada is not in a bad shape. <clears throat> now we see, if we look at consumer confidence, we were above 50. Now we're looking to stay above 50 to have that confidence in the market. And they slowed down. They bottomed out around 35, but up from that point till now in July, we did pick back up. So confidence is slowly picking back up in, in, um, in Canada. We see that um, central banks are stepping in, doing what they have to do. All central banks are doing that across the board. So just looking at it from a commercial standpoint, as far as futures positions, we see that um, they're, they're pretty much at a 50-50 mark as far as commercials, 51% long, 48% short. So you see they're more leaning to the long a little bit. And if we go back to our master tab, we do know that oil, crude oil is pegged to Canada. So if we look at the oil tab, we see that in the notes, they're saying that um, as far as oil, they're, they're thinking about implemented backwardation to increase short-term prices. So when we talk about contango and backwardation, if you understand that, contango is saying that futures contracts are higher than the spot. Backwardation is saying spot is higher than the futures contract. So you see they're trying to push oil prices higher, which can actually help out Canada in a sense. So we just broke down just a quick outlook on an economy. And all we have to do is just do the same process for another economy. And that will give us our, 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 our general idea, our case to say, okay, whether we're going to go long or short, you know, a currency pair. We're not just basing it off of support resistance, guys. If you're going to do this, you have to take this serious, guys. You know, it's just not from a technical bias. The technicals should be the last thing you do because why? We're building our case. That's just like when a lawyer is on a case. What is he doing before he goes to the judge? He's building his case. Now, once he builds his case, he can take his, his case in front of the judge or that technical standpoint because we use that to get into market. So, I def definitely recommend everyone come and get access to the Jathan's Insight Spreadsheet. It's definitely a helpful tool for building a case. Then you, go, you can take it to a technical chart because you're going to have the confidence. All right. So if you do want to take it a step further, I will leave both links in the description below for the spreadsheet. And I recommend come join us, guys, on August 10th. We have a, a two-week training. We're going to break down fundamentals in such detail to where you're going to come out a an investor from a trader you're going to have the confidence you need to understand the markets all right so we'll wrap it up for this one this is our outlook on canada i hope you had you guys got some some insight on this take your notes if you have to and if you have any questions you can email me at jathensinc at gmail.com or info at jathensinstitute.com all right take care guys later